If there was ever such a thing as considered a perfect herb, in my mind, it would have to be basil. Don't get me wrong, I absolutely love herbs and I grow them all. From the woody perennials such as rosemary and thyme, to the lush summer favorites like dill and cilantro, all the way to the come back to life stalwarts like oregano and chives. People always ask me what herbs they should be growing. Indoors, outside, or even in the greenhouse, my answer always comes back to basil. Ease of growth, versatility, bountiful harvests, and flavor that's out of this world, it's one herb that I can never get enough of. So today, let's go over all the things that we need to know to grow the best basil. Soil, water, nutrients, We'll cover it all. That way, you too can be growing as much basil as you could possibly want. Very few culinary herbs are as well known and popular as basil. Known scientifically as Ossimum basilicum, basil is actually a member of the mint family. Originating in Central Africa all the way down to Southeast Asia, the modern basil plant is now grown around the world thanks to its adaptive nature and its ease of growing indoors. Normally grown as an annual plant, basil in warmer climates can be pushed to a biennial or even a perennial. Honestly though, if you can grow the same basil plant for longer than 8 to 10 months without resorting to restarting it from cuttings, make a video on it. I would most certainly watch that. Speaking of those cuttings, there's two ways to start your basil plants. You got your seeds, and those aforementioned cuttings. We'll deep dive into both, but first, let's go over a basil plant's general requirements. Basil is a lovely plant to grow because its needs are relatively few, and if even just its basic requirements are met, it can be ridiculously productive. Grown just for its foliage, we actually don't want our basil plants to set any flowers at all. In fact, the whole trick to growing basil is trying to delay that flowering, known as bolting, for as long as we possibly can. Once the plant flowers, that's it in terms of use, other than maybe saving some seeds. As mentioned, basil grows as well indoors as it does outside. It's a tropical plant, however, so don't expect to be growing it when the temperatures go below 50 degrees Fahrenheit. For optimal growth, temperatures sustained above 70 degrees Fahrenheit seem to be the best. Now, even though basil plants can take the heat, I mean, my greenhouse right now is nearing 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Direct sun at these temperatures is going to likely burn the foliage. Blazing sun and constant air motion really do a number on this lush herb. So, if you're going to be growing basil outside, plant it amongst other plants to give it some shelter and give it some shade. In fact, the number one companion plants to grow with basil are tomatoes and peppers. For soil, I know it sounds contradictory, but the roots of a basil plant are highly sensitive to both drought as well as drowning. So, the soil needs to be well drained, but also able to grab onto, absorb, and hold on to that moisture. There's just no way around it. The large leaves of a basil plant get super thirsty, and they need to replenish the water in their cells to respire and photosynthesize properly. No doubt about it, this plant will wilt and die in a heartbeat without adequate available moisture. If we're really going to get into it and dial it down even further, go with a high organic content, well-drained, neutral, to slightly pH acidic soil, free of debris and free of impediments. Go light on the fertilizer, skewing slightly higher in nitrogen for foliar growth and this plant will love you for it. With all that knowledge about soil, there's no question that basil and containers go hand in hand. Large, small, round, square, it doesn't matter. This herb was just built for the potted life. Four to six inches deep, 
at least a half gallon in volume, and of course those drainage holes in the bottom are all that's required. Generic, fluffy potting soil works just fine, and the light from a kitchen or living room window is all that basil needs. Really try not to water your basil plant every day, especially the container ones. The soil with this herb can quickly become anaerobic, as well, you're just going to wash out all of those nutrients and goodness with every watering. Watering from below, just like with all herbs, is the superior method in my opinion. Just make sure that the amount of water you put in gets absorbed by the soil and that the plants aren't standing in water for more than a few hours. Getting moisture to your basil soil in this fashion takes all the guesswork out of watering. It truly is a set it and forget it trick for watering that you can use on many plants beside your basil. Okay, we now know what basil likes and doesn't like, as well as its basic requirements. How exactly do we get started? Well, like we said with basil, there's two ways. Cuttings or seeds? Let's discuss both. In my opinion, both methods are equally as effective. But if you don't already have access to a basil mother plant, well, you're kind of stuck going the seed route, at least initially. So let's start there. Now, quite often, a potted basil is going to look like many, many individual plants. And sometimes they are. But grown and harvested properly, even the largest basil pots are actually just a couple of stems. There was a time when I'd absolutely blanket the soil with a ton of seeds. There's nothing inherently wrong with this, but truly epic basil production comes from just a couple of main stems forced to branch out by some early pruning. So in that moist organic potting mix, sprinkle in about eight to 10 seeds around half an inch deep to ensure that germination. And hey, if a few more sprout later on, that's okay, we can thin them later. Rather than making a bunch of little holes to plant the seeds, I find it much easier to spread them along the surface and then add in a skim coat of soil to the desired depth. Now, shallow plantings will always run the risk of that topsoil drying out either before or during germination, and basil is no exception. A foolproof way to germinate the seeds perfectly every time is to lay a damp paper towel over the surface of the soil. At 70 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, those basil seeds germinate in like three to five days. Soon after, they begin to push that paper towel up, at which time you can just remove it and carry on like you normally would. This was from a few years ago, and as you can see, there's that overseeding again. Not a deal breaker, but also not the best way to grow basil. Now, the first leaves that appear out of the soil are not actually leaves at all. Rather, they're embryonic vestiges known as cotyledons. Very soon after these seed leaves sprout though, true leaves begin to emerge out the center and we know we're on our way. Harvesting in basil happens quite quickly and often. Actually, the faster that you can harvest your basil, the better. You can begin harvesting your basil once your young plants have two, preferably three leaf nodes. Now, nodes are the part of the stem where it either branches out into more leaves or another branch. Basil is harvested by cutting right above one of these nodes, but we always need to leave one node remaining for the plant to survive. Because this is important, I repeat, basil is best harvested by lopping the tops completely off. It seems harsh, I know, but when you see what happens next, you'll know why. Soon after mowing slash harvesting, the node directly below where you made the cut will transform into two new stems. Very shortly, those two stems grow up get harvested themselves, and then those two become four stems. I think you can see where this is going, and harvesting this way does two things. One, it literally causes your future harvest to go exponential, as the amount of producing stems doubles each time you cut. 
and two, it greatly delays that dreaded flowering for as long as possible. This is how, from a single small pot, you can get unlimited basil. Brilliant. Okay, as you can see, growing basil from seed to harvest is pretty easy. But like we mentioned, there are two ways to propagate these guys. And once you already have a basil mother plant, this next way is even easier. I'm talking about growing them from cuttings. As a member of the mint family, you can cut a basil stem, submerge it by at least one node, and in a week or so, get new white roots, giving you an entirely new basil plant. It's quite amazing, it happens very fast, and it's almost always successful. It's a great way to reset an old plant where you feel that flowering and bolting is imminent. And not only that, it's completely free. Now, as soon as you see more than five or six white roots, you should plant the basil cutting. I have to admit, I forgot about these guys on a shelf over there for about six to seven weeks. Now, they should plant up and grow just fine. However, when you are planting your basil cuttings, you really want the emerging roots to look like this for the best success. Keep the young cuttings well watered in a moderate amount of light between temperatures of 60 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Within about a week or so, they'll be fully established. Okay, we now know everything there is to know about basil. How to germinate it, how to grow it, how to harvest it, and how to perpetually keep it going by starting cuttings. However, it's a lot of info when it's presented all at once. So let's go ahead and recap those main points for maximum retention. Basil, a lush herbaceous member of the mint family grown mostly as an annual around the world. Simple to grow with very basic requirements, basil is equally at home indoors as it is outside. Tropical by nature, this fast growing herb should be kept above 60 degrees Fahrenheit in a well lit location. However, high heat and wind coupled with direct sunlight can do a number on the foliage. So shelter from other plants if you're growing outside may be necessary. The soil should always be well drained, high in organic matter and a neutral to slightly acidic pH. Because of all this, containers make basil growing super easy. The pot should be at least six inches deep and half a gallon in volume. And oh yeah, don't forget those drainage holes. Now, basil can be propagated in two ways, seeds or cuttings. Seeds are really easy. Plant them right at the surface about half an inch deep and they germinate in under a week at about 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Cotyledons are followed by the true leaves. Keep the plants well lit and water enough to prevent wilting. Between 70 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit, you'll be harvesting basil within the month. Speaking of, never harvest your basil plants by picking off single leaves. It may seem brutal, but for the best continual harvests, cut the stems down to one or two leaf nodes and let the plant regrow itself. In short order, two new stems appear and multiply on the node below each cut and the cycle continues. To propagate by cuttings, simply place a two node section in water with the bottom node completely submerged. In a week or so, at room temperatures in a well lit location, you're going to start to notice white roots appearing. About a week after that, once you have more than seven roots, and they're at least an inch long, you can look at potting them up. Keep them moist, well lit but sheltered, and in about 10 to 14 days, the plants are going to be fully established and on their way. Infinite, unlimited basil for very little work. Basil is an amazing herb, and in my opinion, is totally unmatched in the flavor department. As a mint, it's super easy to grow, which is great, because the fresh stuff is always going to be superior. 
Hopefully today, I've given you everything you need to know to grow your best basil yet. Hey, happy pesto making guys, and I'll see you soon. Hey, thanks so much for watching guys. I appreciate the support more than you know. And if you're getting value from these videos, please like and share them to spread the word and help your fellow gardener to grow better.